As a result of a massive attack on Crimea on the night of May 30th, seven targets were hit. As the ASTRA channel reports, citing informed sources, four boats, two ferries and a pilot boat were damaged or destroyed as a result of a night missile attack on Crimea. In addition, five people were injured. In addition to the pilot boat Maria, which sank as a result of damage received as a result of falling rocket debris, the ferry Conroe Trader and the ferry Avangard were damaged. The latter ran aground due to damage. One of the crew members, Roman Stas, was injured on the Conroe Trader ferry, he is undergoing surgery right now. Four people were wounded on the Avangard. In addition, for transport landing boats Kansas 701 were damaged, the destruction of two of which was already reported to the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine confirmed that on the night of May 30th, two Russian boats were destroyed in the temporarily occupied Crimea. According to preliminary data, we are talking about high-speed transport and landing KS-701 Tuna. Let us remind you that it was previously reported that the boats were attacked near the village of Chernomorskoy, Epitoria region. U.S. President Biden is considering two tough new countermeasures to stop Russia. Russia's achievements on the Ukraine front are forcing the White House to reconsider some of its so-called red lines. To counter Russia's offensive in Ukraine, U.S. President Joe Biden is considering two new tough countermeasures, columnist David Ignatz writes in his column for the Washington Post. The point is to punish China for supplying key technologies to Moscow and to lift restrictions on Ukraine's use of American short-range weapons to attack Russian territory. These steps would represent a significant escalation of Biden's carefully calibrated policy of supporting Ukraine to avoid direct confrontation with Putin or his key ally Xi Jinping. The fact that such steps are now being considered shows the administration's growing concern about Ukraine's vulnerability on the battlefield, noted the author. It is pointed out that the threat of new sanctions against China is especially sensitive since it arises at a time when both countries are trying to stabilize their relations. But US officials are concerned that Beijing, while formally honoring its promise not to supply weapons to Moscow, has become a major enabler of the Russian defense sector and its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. It is noted that China is the largest supplier to Russia of 50 high-priority dual-use goods and also supplies about 70% of Russian imports of machine tools and 90% of imported microelectronics. In addition, China is providing Russia with satellite technology that could be critical for communications and targeting in strikes against Ukraine. The columnist adds that US officials are equally concerned that Russia is massing troops and equipment on the border to attack Kharkov and other cities in eastern Ukraine. American artillery and short-range missiles could hit these targets without threatening deep strikes on Russia. But for now, the United States is limiting their use inside Ukraine so it cannot strike large Russian logistics and troop assembly centers directly abroad. But that could change as other NATO countries put pressure on Biden to loosen controls. The author suggests that we may be approaching another turning point in Ukraine. As China increasingly leans toward a partnership with a newly dominant Russia, Biden is weighing whether to deepen his alliance with Kiev. That would bring new risks, but it would make sense if it could bolster a shaky Ukraine and restore balance at the negotiating table at which this war must ultimately be settled. Trump would bomb Moscow if Russia attacked Ukraine during his presidency. US presidential candidate Donald Trump said he would bomb Moscow if its invasion of Ukraine began during his presidency. He said this during the election campaign at a private event, writes the Washington Post. The publication's anonymous interlocutors noted that Trump suggested that if he were the president of the United States, he would bomb Moscow and Beijing if the Russian Federation invaded Ukraine or China attacked Taiwan. The remarks surprised some of his campaign donors. Journalists add that in general, during pre-election events, Trump talks about foreign policy and the topics he discusses at rallies, 
namely inflation and immigration. As Joe Biden's supporters in Hollywood and Silicon Valley refrain from supporting Biden's disastrous campaign, donors across the country are maximizing their efforts to re-elect President Trump as they realize we cannot afford four more years of Joe Biden's terrible policies. Trump spokeswoman Caroline Levitt said in a statement, Trump was recently booed and ridiculed during the Libertarian National Convention. In particular, during the speech of the US presidential candidate, people in the crowd shouted, bullshit, and other offensive language. According to some experts, Trump's second presidency could tear apart Europe. The return of the former president would cement changes in the United States that can no longer be ignored, Politico wrote. As the presumptive Republican presidential nominee, Trump has barely mentioned Ukraine or articulated any policy positions regarding the country or Russia's war against it. With less than six months away from the US presidential election, Trump's vague past remarks on foreign policy, his public admiration for Russian President Vladimir Putin, and the varied views within and outside the GOP are shaping the discourse in his absence. Despite posting frequently on his social media network Truth Social, he has mentioned Ukraine only a few times in recent months. We should never give money anymore without the hope of a payback, or without strings attached. One of Trump's Truth Social posts read in February. Another from April said, as everyone agrees, Ukrainian survival and strength should be much more important to Europe than to us, but it is also important to us. Get moving Europe. At the same time, the Spiegel journalists reported that Biden may refuse a second term in favor of Michelle Obama. It is known that the Democratic Party even included Michelle Obama in its public opinion polls regarding potential candidates.